<clears throat> Alright, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachah Kudash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us the truth and that Ruel. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth, okay? Now, as you can see, the title of this lesson is Going into the History, parentheses, Apocrypha, okay? And this is a lesson that was predicated upon a video that the beloved apostle uh, Ariamlap had done a couple years back entitled The Apocrypha Removed, Biblical Destruction Group 1826, okay? Which is a video that you can find on the brother, um, by the YouTube page Rahama Yum History, all right, which was a re-upload uh, done a couple years ago. Matter of fact, it was uh, February the third, twenty twenty-three. Okay, but uh, nonetheless, the spirit jumped on me to make more light upon this topic because when you go down to the nitty gritty of the biblical destruction group of eighteen twenty-six, it goes back to our arch enemy Edom. Okay, but precisely the chief of that nation, Amalek, okay? Even uh, just doing a quick search on the web of the Biblical Destruction Group, okay? The first thing that it showed me was Amalek, okay? Which is no coincidence, because when you go into a book that the beloved apostle um, Ariamlam had also brought out, entitled To Eliminate the Opiate, okay? By uh, Marvin S. Antelman, all right? The majority of the people that are found within the excerpt of the, um, you know, the come up of this organization are all Amalekites, okay? So-called little hats. All right, so it's no coincidence that Amalek is the first um, segment of information that you find when you look up uh, the biblical destruction group, okay? As it tells you in the definition of Amalek in Wikipedia, Amalek is described in the Hebrew Bible as a staunch persecutor nation of the Israelites, okay? And this goes back to the the prophecy, all right, in Genesis, the 25th chapter, okay? Of two manner of nations being in the womb of Rebekah, okay? One would be stronger than the other, and the other one would be a vessel towards dishonor, okay? And as we're now uh, living in the latter prophecies of Esau's rulership, he's played the process and um, role of deceiving, okay? Deceiving ultimately the whole world into thinking a lie is the truth, okay? To the point where everybody now in this society are put under the estate of being in gross darkness, okay? Just like it tells you in the book of Isaiah, all right, the 60th chapter. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 60 and... Two, it says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, all right? And this darkness is speaking about without understanding, okay? Because without understanding, pursuant to Proverbs uh, 18 and 21, all right? As a matter of fact, let me get that next. Proverbs 18 and 21. It says, I'm sorry, I think it's Proverbs 21 and 16. Right, Salakia. So Proverbs chapter 21 and 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Okay? Meaning being in a state of darkness, you know? Not knowing where you're going, being in that state of just dead. Okay? Like a zombie. <laughs> Alright? But through Esau's deception of bringing forth these strongholds of delusions, alright? Society has believed a lie. Alright? But through the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father being brought back upon the earth via Abba Bivens and now being upon the spirit of the apostles, Tahar, all right, Apostle Ariamlab, Apostle Gabar, Racha, the bishops and the elders, all right, truth is now being declared, all right. It says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And that glory first and foremost starts off with this truth, okay, just like it tells you in the book of, um, Corinthians, okay? We go from faith to faith 
and now we're coming into the glory of understanding the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, all right, of the word, all right, and the apocrypha is one of them, all right. Now, as a matter of fact, that reminds me of another scripture, real quick. <clears throat> And it's a beautiful thing to now just, you know, be able to go into the Apocrypha and now start understanding the truth, okay? Because without the Apocrypha, a lot of understanding would be shunned, okay? And ultimately, that's the reason as to why Esau brought forth this organization, okay? A lot of people bring forth the point of saying that the Apocrypha was taken out because of, you know, the lack of aid to produce the Apocrypha books, okay? But the main and true reason is due to the fact of how much wisdom is found within the Apocrypha, man. Okay? Via the Apocrypha, you're given the understanding of where Northern Kingdom would be found. Case in point, 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. Okay? The in-depth description of the Israelites, precisely Southern Kingdom, being Hellenized by Antiochus. Even going before Antiochus, it gives you the understanding of Alexander the Greek. Okay? Showing you also that the Apocrypha is canon, okay? A book that is married with historical events, okay? But through Alexander the Greek, he dispersed his kingdom to four generals, okay? Lysimachus, Ptolemy, Cassander, all right? And Seleucus. Through these four generals, you had one that reigned supreme, which was the Seleucid Empire, which is where you get Antiochus that brought forth all right, the Hellenization of Israel now taking the custom of the Greeks, okay? And many other scriptures uh, are brought forth in the Apocrypha that not only deal with truth, okay, but also shows forth the reality of the characteristics of the Heavenly Father being something that the world likes to call a racist, okay? Of only dealing with the nation of Israel. And like I said earlier, through the Spirit being put upon the apostles, they now have exercised truth, okay? Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 27 and 9. The birds will resort unto the like, so will truth return unto them that practice in her, okay? So now let's first and foremost, before we uh, get into the history, I want to bring out um, a book that I made mention a little earlier ago called To Eliminate the Opiate. Okay, because in this book, there's a, there's a, art, uh, not an article, but a passage that shows forth the organization of where the, um, the biblical destruction group came about. Okay, under chapter 12, it says the birth of biblical criticism, okay, which took place during the time of the 1700, uh, roughly around the 17th century coming into the 18th century. Okay, where you had a lot of little hats following the um, the teachings of a guy named uh, Shabbati Zevi. Okay, the spelling of his name is kind of weird, so I'm gonna just you know, for the sake of you brothers, you know, this is that man. You can do your own research regarding him, but this is ultimately a a, a vessel that the Lord used to bring forth deception via uh, Amalek, using him. Okay. Because during his, uh, the time that he was alive, society saw him as being the Messiah, okay? But it was simply not the case, all right? He was ultimately used as a psyop to bring forth another movement, to bring forth deception, okay? But through this man, you also had teachings that would be later on followed of taking bits of the truth out, Okay? So now when we go to chapter 12 of the birth of biblical criticism under the book to eliminate the opiate volume one all right we find a name by the salaki we find a guy by the name of jonathan uh Ipskitz, okay which is a little hat all right when you go to his uh, bibliography <clears throat> this nigga came from germany okay and who's the who are the germans Timon, okay you can read this for yourself. It doesn't necessarily give you too much information, all right? Because the majority of these people that um, founded this organization of the Biblical Destruction Group, were, um, a lot of their bibliography and their background information was taken out, okay? 
And this book will, if I'm not mistaken, later speak about that. All right. But it says, Jonathan Eastbick's first heretical crypto Sabbatian theological seminary was in Prague, okay? And the teachings of uh, crypto Sabbatian, okay, was uh, knowledge that was contrary to the teachings of the Little Hats, okay? Jonathan was somebody that was influenced and taken the liking of somebody that taught uh, the Talmud, the Torah, you know, somebody that was zealous of keeping the laws, okay? But it was far from that, okay? It says, when Rabbi Chagis urged a ban on registration of Yeshiva students, all right? And a Yeshiva is a college. <clears throat> it says, when Rabbi Chagis, uh, all right, urged a ban on registration of, of college students, Yegvis College, Chagis was under the impression that its registrants were good. God-fearing Jewish young men who aspire to the independent study on the Torah and Talmudic texts, okay? So he brought forth the persona of, you know, having students that look like they were in tune with the scriptures, you know? But like it's going to say, in reality, they were hand-picked students who would be recommended to the college by two-faced crypto uh, Shebitin, religious instructors who were dedicated and indoctrinated in uh, Sabbatanism. Okay, now when you go into the understanding of this term, all right, real quick, like I said, it takes us back to this man, um, Shivati Zevi. Okay, and when you go down to a matter of fact, um, let me just go to this dude right here and then look up adherence. All right, it gives you an influence towards what the Sabbateans and the religion consisted of. It says, probably by his consent, Shabbati's adherents, okay, his followers, plan to abolish many ritualistic observances because, according to a minority opinion in Talmud, in the Messianic time, there would no longer be holy obligations, okay? So they were taking things out of the scriptures, all right? Even understanding uh, Jonathan's role, he was a... Uh, he was a rebel, okay? He played the part of being someone zealous, all right? When you do your history regarding his uh, background, all right? Matter of fact, real quick, let me just do this. Open up another tab. And Jonathan Ebiscuits. Um, let me see. Yep, right here. In Prague, okay, which is where he founded his uh, college, Ibeskitz received permission to print the Talmud, but with the omission of all passages contradicting the principles of Christianity in consultation with Chief Rabbi David Oppenheim. Okay? So showing you that this man, all right, Jonathan Ebix, followed the same understanding of the followers of Shabbat Zevi, okay, by taking things out of the scriptures to bring forth um turmoil amongst beliefs okay which will later bring forth the catapult of putting the truth under the uh, under the rug okay and this is ultimately the mindset towards this organization that will be later be founded by one of Jonathan's um pupils in his college okay and as a matter of fact real quick let me get Psalm 64. And six. Matter of fact, let me start at five. It says they encourage themselves in the evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, "Who shall see them?" Okay, and this is ultimately the um, the mindset of Jonathan. Okay, I hate saying his last name because it's very um, it's difficult to say, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, he was taking passages from the Talmud out to bring forth that dichotomy between Christians, all right, and other groups of Jews, like the Orthodox, all right, and other people that believed in different ways of philosophies, okay? <clears throat> and that's ultimately what you see today, all right? Nothing but confusion when it comes to these different traditions of men being put together, okay? <clears throat> but through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashimi Hawashai, 
we now see the snares. Okay? We see through Esau's deception, man. All right? Verse 6, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them. And the heart is deep. Okay? Now, real quick, let's look up the word deep. It goes back to the Hebrew 60.13. Aymak. Okay? And it says deep, mysterious. All right? Deaths, unsearchable. And for centuries, this understanding of the Apocrypha being a valid book to read has been shunned from our nation, man. Okay? But through the Heavenly Father bringing forth, all right, the Holy Spirit back upon the dry bones, okay, the breath of life, we have now been given the mysteries, okay? Real quick, this is 1 Corinthians 2 and... And 10, it says, But the Heavenly Father has revealed them unto us by His seat. I'm sorry, by His Spirit. Okay, revealed what? The mysteries, okay, the deep things that cannot be found. Okay, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and this is the beauty of now being able to see through all the smoke and mirrors, man. Okay, Proverbs 20 and 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, okay? But a man of understanding will draw it out, all right? So now, let's keep going into the understanding of this whole um, movement that Jonathan was bringing forth via his uh, yeshva, his college. It says, they spread themselves over the face of Eastern Europe, all right? Which is where Esau came out of during the time of the Renaissance era, Okay? As you read Revelation, the 20th chapter, real quick. <clears throat> Revelation 20 and... Matter of fact, I'll start at the top. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. Alright, the bottomless pit being Europe. Okay? Britain. And a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon. Alright? That old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. All right, and through the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father, we now understand that the person that fits the characteristics of being a dragon, the serpent back in the garden, which was a man, that plays the characteristics of being an adversary and a deceiver, is the so-called white man who took place during the Renaissance era. Okay? The Europeans, the Caucasians, okay, that would later stem back to the Ottoman Empire, of building themselves up and bringing forth that deception, okay? Because if I'm not mistaken, even this man, uh, right, he goes back to the Ottoman mystic, okay? But, um, damn, where's we at, man? So, like, yeah, I got a lot of tabs open, Aki. <laughs> but, right, right, Esau plays forth the deception and the characteristic of all these roles, okay? Dragon going back to the Greek word Draco. Okay, which was an Athenian lawgiver in Greece that would bring forth harsh judgments for minor misdemeanors. Okay, a serpent is known for its subtility. Devil goes back to the word uh, Diablos, which means, um, if I'm not mistaken, it means deceiver or adversary. It should be deceiver. Okay, Slaki, it's slander or false accuser, which goes back to being de uh, a deceiver. Okay metaphorically applied to a man by opposing the cause of God may be said to act the part of the devil or to side with them. Okay? And Esau is the one that fills in the shoes of being the devil man. Okay? It's not some nigga, alright, at the earth's core, alright, red from the head to the toe. Okay? Satan goes back to the Greek word satanas. Alright? Adversary. Okay, the prince of evil spirits, the inverted, the inveterate adversary of God and Christ. He incites apostasy from God into sin. And apostasy is the abandonment or reuni uh, re renunciation of a religious or political belief. Okay? And this is exactly the MO, alright, that Jonathan was bringing. Alright? I didn't even, uh, I forgot that the definition of Satanah says that, man. Okay? 
But this is what he was doing. All right. A damn little hat that even had incest with his little uh, his daughter and brought forth a baby. All right. Showing that these people are nothing but wicked ass Edomites, man. Okay. Going back to their progenitor Esau. <clears throat> But going back to eliminate the opiate, it says they spread themselves over the face of Eastern Europe, posing legitimate teachers of Judaism, but earned side income through subsidies of wealthy uh, Shabbateans. OK, so they were ultimately nothing more but um, bring forth the division. OK, and playing the part of a um, damn, I forget the, the term of it, man. Mercenary. OK, they were being mercenaries. All right. It says they sought out all time students whom I'm not sure why this is blank. Real quick, let me grab because uh, I have the book in hand. So real quick, I just want to make sure we're not missing any points when we uh, read along. <clears throat> um, Okay, yeah, it's just like, a, I guess this is like a rough draft that um, Marvin had brought forth, all right? But it says, they sought out all time students whom they could take into their confidence, who had a flair for Kabbalah, and who were good schemers, extremely brilliant, well, those students who were being raised Shabbateens or crypto Shabbateens by their parents, okay? So they were getting the, the best of the best students, okay? That would bring forth that false narrative of believing a lie, okay? And this is ultimately what you can see in this generation today, okay? Of Christians believing that, you know, God can save everybody. Same with the uh, the branch of Catholicism, okay? And cats like vocab, all right? Who, through the spirit, may be a little hat, all right? And also these other Israelite groups that push that facade of being Israelites, but inwardly, they're nothing but, um, you know, playing that narrative of being a deceiver. Okay. It says, um, once having located the right candidate, they would tutor him privately and secretly in the mystical teachings of the movement. Okay. The network of Shabbateens was held together by an elaborate system of communications insisting of couriers and emissaries whose full-time job it was to run messages all over Eastern Europe, okay? Across the network traveled much information and secret messages, some of which have been lying around in archives in Europe. It reached the archives because from the time to time, various governments who were mo uh, monitoring Shabbatean activity in Europe were able to intercept and confiscate their communications, okay? So they were pretty much, uh, you know, bringing forth message, message, message to see whether or not their teachings were deceiving society. OK, because during this time, it was, like I said, uh, 18th, early 18th century. OK, so Esau was now in the brink of bringing forth his enterprise. OK, and one of the main foundations of him bringing forth his uh, system, all right, is a priesthood, okay? Just like always in the past with the other kingdoms, all right? Even going back to Egypt, you had the magistries, okay? That was Egypt's priesthood, all right? You had the Babylonians that also had a priest that came in the name of Bel, okay? And now in this generation, you have a priesthood that goes in the name of Satan, Okay, that brings forth all this falsehood and abomination, man. Real quick, let's grab Revelation 16. <clears throat> and 12, I'm sorry, um, matter of fact, right, 13. It says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, okay? And this is the main one that I want to speak about regarding the false prophet, okay? And the false prophets goes back uh, to the Catholic Church, okay? Going back to the uh, to Vatican City, 
all right which is where you get all these false traditions that you see people walking into all right which is something that these little hats were bringing forth during this uh era that we're reading about okay matter of fact let me keep reading it says verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils working miracles okay and this is ultimately the narrative that this uh, little hat Shabbat Tizevi was playing, okay? Telling people that he was the Messiah, all right? Causing a movement in uh, the origins of Ashkenazi, okay? Pure wickedness, man. Showing you that we are living in a time of the Edomite uh, Salakia. We're living in the time of Esau's uh, supremacy, Okay? It says, For they are spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Point being is, you know, working miracles. Okay? Because through his philosophies, he's been able to bring forth that facade. Okay? <clears throat> so now let's go back to... Um, Eliminate the opiate. It says, reading on. Um, right, right here. An interesting letter confiscated from the Shabbatian prophet Judah Lieb Prosnitz en route to Jonathan uh, E. Speaks sheds light on these activities. Prosnitz is condemned in the beginning of Rabbi Kigzi's letter urging a ban on E. Speaks Yeshiva. All right. Shaggy's described pro Pros, I'm sorry, Salakiaki. These names is crazy. <laughs> Prosnitz as the abominable Lieb of Prosnitz. Prosnitz prophesied that Jonathan Eastbrick would be the Messiah to follow Shabetsi Chivi. Okay? So they thought that they were, he was this dude in the reincarnation. Okay? Showing me that falsehood of bringing forth the illusion of miracles. Okay? Which will later bring forth society into that gross darkness that we read in Isaiah the 60th chapter. Okay? Which can be seen in today's generation on the 10th level, man. Okay? To the point where nobody eyes a bat towards the many lies that we see in broad daylight. Okay? When uh, Ibishkit's Prague Seminary was in full swing... His crypto Shabbatine fledgings were already scheming to how they could destroy and discredit the legitimate rabbinate uh, college system and communal structure of the teeming city of Prague. Okay? So that was the MO of this man. Okay? To bring forth falsehood. Alright? And put forth strong delusions. Alright? And that's the same thing that we see happening. Okay? Case in point, uh, goddamn Pope Francis. All right, real quick. Pope uh, Francis given green light. Right, under uh, Netherlands Forum, the World Economic Forum has been granted authorization by Pope Francis. All right, which, like we read in Revelation, the 16th chapter, that's the spirit of the false prophet. Okay. Going back to Catholicism, to rewrite the Holy Bible, according to a WEF insider who reveals the Pope wants a new, quoted, fact-checked version of the Bible to be far more political, with the central place for the prime uh, primacy of nature and far less about God. Okay, meaning that they're going to discredit more and more and chip away more and more to the validity of the Scriptures. Okay, to the point where the Scriptures are going to be something in the past, man. Okay, and if anybody has any kind of uh, moral status that links back to the Bible, you're going to be marked out. Okay, and this is where we're going into, man. Going back to the time of Jonathan. Okay, so now keeping uh, reading on. All right. We left off right here. The chief rabbi of the Prague community that time was most prominent and saintly man, Rabbi David Oppenheim. Rabbi Oppenheim had his college where students from Jewish communities throughout Europe 
would come to engage in advanced uh, Talmudic studies, okay? Now, for this part, I'm going to just skip it. You can read it for yourself, okay? Lord's will, if I remember, I'll put this book in the uh, the description box below. Just look for chapter 12 uh, in this book, and you'll be able to find the same document. But this uh, paragraph later shows that the students of Jonathan would fight the other students of these different colleges, okay? Which shows forth that facade of Jonathan students being nothing more but the term that I used, okay? Mercenaries. All right, so from here, we're going to read uh, this paragraph. It says, By this time, Rabbi Oppenheim's students were engaged in... As, <clears throat> excuse me. Were engaged... <coughs> In escalate, escalating the retaliation, and although details of how they fought back have not survived, it is very possible that some of Jonathan's students were systematically killed, because on June 16, 1772, Charles IV of Austria issued an edict to end the feud. I mentioned this background information because it was from this environment, all right, that Carl Anton emerged, okay, showing you the nature of Esau, okay, of killing one another. Just so they can be on the pedestal of being the big man, okay, and having that pump. But out of that disgusting ass uh, college of Jonathan, you had an, a guy by the name of Carl Anton, okay, which go into this uh, blog that the apostle had brought out, which was made by uh, a brother in the faith, all right, I'm not sure who it is, but. Uh, he comes in the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, okay? If I'm not mistaken, later on, yep. You can find the names right here. But he later brings forth the point as to how Carl Anton was the one that uh, founded, all right, the biblical destruction group. Right here in the... Um yep, it says... One such proselyter was Frankis Carl Anton, okay? And Frankis are also people that follow the teachings of Shabitinism, okay? Carl Anton, who in 1776, okay? What a strange coincidence of that being the same year where Esau declared his independence, okay? Organized the Biblical Destruction Group, a closed circle of intellectuals whose main objective would be to destroy the Bible. Okay? So ultimately, being a successor of not only uh, Shabbat Sevi, but Jonathan uh, Ishvix, okay? The ideological prog uh, progeny of these two groups branched off into revolutionary and biblical countergroups in Central Europe in the late 18th century, okay? Which is where you get, um, um, matter of fact, I think I have it right here, yep. The British and Foreign Bible Society, okay, which, as it states, often known in England, Wales, as simple, as simply the the Bible Society is a non uh, denominational, if I said that correctly, Christian Bible Society with charity status, whose purpose is to make the Bible available throughout the world, okay, which is bullshit. All right, but this is a uh, the organization that would later stem from the Biblical Destruction Group, okay? <clears throat> it says, where we leave off? Um, I'll just keep reading. The ideological progeny of these two groups branched off into revolutionary and biblical countergroups in Central Europe in the late 18th century and um, metastorized in the United States about the middle of the 19th century in the form of the political economic and social sciences okay so this group was nothing more but a pseudo act to further bring forth lies man okay and who was it founded to going back to this nigga Carl Anton okay a man that fell under the teachings and tutelage of Jonathan okay now let's read a little about this dude it says Carl Anton emerged a star pupil of Yishvik's uh, college. After graduate, uh, graduation from the college, Anton converted to Christianity. Okay? And there was a big reason towards why he did that. 
<coughs> he was a Frankist and occupied a chair as professor of Hebrew uh, Hemstedt, okay? And considering the background information of this man, it's very hard to find, okay? This is like the only thing that you could find about him, but his name originally was Moses Gershon Cohen, okay? But the reason as to why he changed his name is due to the fact of what he, uh, the acts that he was committing, okay? Which was nothing more but pushing more dirt and dirt and dirt upon the truth of the scriptures, man. Okay? Just like it tells in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, this devil has been working. Okay? Let me get that. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. So look, I'll start at uh, 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Okay? And this goes back to the Roman Empire, man. Okay? Esau has been working. His foundation was founded by the Roman Empire. And now in this society, we see that same concept of this draconian society in full effect. Okay? But now through the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father, we now see truth for what it is, man. It says, only he who not letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, okay? And a part of him being taken out of the way is understanding the truth, okay? No more believing a lie, but now seeing reality for what it is. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, okay? And before the Heavenly Father truly brings forth the destruction, it's going to take place by verbally condemning Him. Okay? And that's the part that we come in. Alright? Of bringing forth and declaring how filthy of a kingdom Esau, Esau's kingdom is. Okay? Of trying to hide the Apocrypha. Of trying to think that it's a book that has no credit of being a part of the other 66, bo uh, 66 books found in your local KJV Bible. Okay? It's truly a blessing, man, that we can see. We can truly see now. Okay? Because this man's been, he's been putting in that work, man. Okay? Like it tells in, um, let's get that in Proverbs 4 and 16. Alright? He can't sleep unless he does some kind of wickedness. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. All right, <laughs> let's read that in the NLT. See what that says. It says, For evil people can't sleep <laughs> until they've done their evil deed for the day, they can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. Okay, for they eat bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. All right, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. All right. Point blank period, man. So now let's go back to uh, to eliminate the opiate and read more about this dude, Carl Anton. Because this is the man that ultimately brought forth the ideology of bringing forth uh, more information towards removing the Apocrypha. Okay? And even putting forth, uh, you know, the schisms that you see within the scriptures, okay? Case in point, in the in the uh, New Testament, in the book of Acts, instead of saying Passover, it says Easter, okay? This could very well stem back to this organization. <clears throat> it says, Yisfix disciples had definite objectives assigned to them so that they would play certain roles in the revolution, okay? And the main revolution's MO was deception, okay? Carl Anton's assignment was to discredit the Bible, okay? In order to best accomplish this, no obstacle was standing in his way, so such his religion. Therefore, Anton officially converted to Christian, uh, converted to Christianity so that he could hold an esteemed professional chair, okay? So he put himself under the facade of being a Christian to further bring forth that falsehood, okay? So for you Christians watching this, your belief system is predicated upon a man that brought forth lies, okay? Just understand that. Therefore, Anton officially converted to Christianity so that he could hold an esteemed professional chair. 
Anton's function was so sensitive and scandalous that painstaking efforts were made to obscure his activities. This is why reference to his life cannot be found in the Encyclopedia Judaica nor in the Old Jewish Encyclopedia. Okay, just like I said earlier, a lot of his information in his bibliography is hard to find. Okay, because he played a very big toll upon the means of disannulling the scriptures, man. Okay. <clears throat> Now let's go right here. It says, to effectuate his plan, Anton devised a game plan to discredit the Bible, a masterly blueprint that would take about one century to develop, okay? And like we read a little earlier ago, all right, the biblical destruction group took place in 1776, okay? And when was the Apocrypha taken out? Let's go to... um. Let's go right here. In 1885, okay? It says the Apocrypha is a selection of books which were published in the original 1611 King James Bible. These apocryphal books were positioned between the Old and New Testament. The Apocrypha was a part of the KJV for 274 years until being removed in 1885 AD. Adan Domino, if I'm not mistaken. A portion of these books were called Deuter uh, Deuterocanonical books by some entities such as the Catholic Church, okay? So that was roughly around the cent uh, the century, all right, towards where his master plan took effect of disannulling the Apocrypha, okay? A part of his segment to bring forth his uh, assignment of discrediting the Bible. Let's read that part again. Um, the plan went into effect, Salakia. Anton devised a game plan to discredit the Bible in a masterly blueprint that would take about one century. Okay? The time period links. The plan went into effect as scheduled. Its essential features implemented over a period taking nearly twice as long for Anton could not anticipate future setbacks in the Illuminati timetable. Anton's blueprint follows. Okay? So he was in the midst of the Luciferians of today. All right, the light bearers that bring forth the light of darkness, okay? As a matter of fact, real quick, there should be a scripture in the, uh, the book of Job that speaks about that. Yep, this is Job chapter 10 and 22. A land of darkness as darkness itself, and in the shadow of death without any order. And where the light is as darkness. Okay? Let's get this in the NLT. It says, It is a land as dark as moon. I'm sorry. It is a land as dark as midnight. A land of gloom and confusion. Where even the light is dark as midnight. Okay? This is that B system, man. Okay? Precisely the land being America. Where that narrative of falsehood is... Uh, smiled upon okay and then through here it just gives you the outline towards how he was how he was able to fulfill the you know his enterprise of bringing forth falseness okay we'll read a couple of these it says point one develop a closed circle of intellectuals whose main objective would be to destroy the bible Okay, going back to Psalm 64, all right, of encouraging themselves in a um, in an evil matter. Okay, these intellectuals should be mainly academ uh, academicians who should who should Salakia, who should occupy chairs at leading universities, but other intellectuals would supplement their work. Okay, which is why now you have many colleges under the means of Christianity. Okay, case in point, out here in California, you have uh, Azusa University, okay, which is a Christian school, all right, all in the means of bringing forth nothing more but gross darkness, okay. <clears throat> it says, this intellectual group should attempt to put itself 
into positions where it could control the dissemination of information vital to biblical studies. This means they should gravitate to positions of authority in scholastic pl uh, publications dealing with these fields, including libraries and archives. Okay? And I remember the beloved apostle, um, not apostle, Salakia, the beloved elder Daniela out here in California had stated that the Vatican, uh, the Vatican has a library of, that is 53 miles? God damn, I didn't even know that. Right, it says the Vatican apost Apostolic Archive has been estimated to contain 85 kilometers, 53 miles of shelving. All right. So, <laughs> that's one, one hell of a library, man. Okay. With 35,000 volumes in the selective catalog alone, complete archives of letters written by the popes known as the Papal Registers are available beginning with the uh, papacy of Pope Innocent III, which is bullshit. All right. Which is what the Catholics believe. Fucking Pope. But going back. Uh, segment four. All sections of the Illuminati, Frankists, and fellow revolutionaries of future generations must cooperate fully to promote and enhance the career advancement of the Biblical Destruction Group. Okay. So all these groups. All right. That are founded by Esau Edom. Came under the means of bringing forth that false narrative. Via the BDG. It says, and should apply pressure where necessary towards that advancement. BDG must be self-perpetuating. Every member must produce at least one replacement for himself in his lifetime. All media at that disposal of revolutionaries must be rallied to disseminate propaganda issued by the member of the BDG. Okay? And that, you, you know, you can keep reading off for yourself, but it shows forth that the biblical destruction group came through the lineage, all right, of Amalek, okay, by the teachings of this little hat, stemming to Jonathan Iskavez, uh, down to his pupils in his college, mainly Carl Anton had brought forth the narrative of thinking that the Apocrypha is a lie, okay, but through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, we understand the truth, okay? And now as we've exercised, uh, like we read in Sirach 27 and 9. Let me get that again. 27 and 9. The birds will resort unto their like. So will truth return unto them that practice in her. Okay? Through the apostles playing this prophecy, we now understand the validity of the apocrypha, man. Okay? So it's a beautiful thing to now, you know, go into this book that at one point we didn't have any understanding of, okay? So through Esau committing the act of removing the Apocrypha, all right, pursuant to Revelation 22 and 19, he suffers the fate of receiving a very gruesome judgment, man, okay? We'll end it off with that one. Revelation 22, and I think it's 18 or 19. Right, Revelation 22, starting at 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, okay, which is something that Esau has done, okay, case in point, uh, first John the fifth uh, chapter, okay, regarding the scripture that Christians and Catholics always love to go to that consisted the Trinity, okay, that was a scripture that was added unto the scriptures, okay. If any man shall add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, taking out the Apocrypha, the Heavenly Father shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Okay? Point blank period, man. Okay? So with that, Lord's will, this video was edifying straight to the point, giving all praise to our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rechakudash. Lord, will you brothers were taking uh, notes, okay? Because a lot of history uh, was brought forth in this lesson, okay? And it was more so just to, you know, equip brothers with the information regarding the whole means as to how uh, the Apocrypha was taken out, okay? So if any, you know, a demon wants to combat and think that the Apocrypha is of no avail, 
you know, understand the reality of it, okay? So with that, giving uh, double honors once again to the apostles, the bishops, and elders, the great millstone that have taught us his truth. Peace and blessings go out to the elect. Shalom.